Hello everyone, Carol Andy from cudigitizing.com. Today I'm going to show you a bit more about lettering on, and particularly on arcs and also a little bit about the Mega Hoop which is a three position hoop available for your machines. Some of you might already have it. And so this logo was sent in by Pat. She wanted to create a, a large embroidery for a large project and she wanted to fill a hoop with the logo on an arc. So I've done that and I'm going to show you how that's done now. So I'm just going to close that one and I've got the mega hoop loaded here and what I'm going to do first of all is take off the automatic centering because that can make the hoop jump around all over the place and I don't want that and also it's difficult to position your lettering we can always make sure it's centered at the end so just right click on your hoop icon and select manual centering and go OK and the next thing I want to do is rotate the hoop to a horizontal position because that's going to be more logical and to rotate hoops in this software you go to the multi hooping view select the hoop and if you want to turn it at 45 degree angles just use the arrows if you want to just put it at any other angle reselect it again and you can turn it to any angle you like okay back to the design view so in the um, mega hoop you can see these probably see these red lines blue lines and green lines what they're doing is defining the stitching area so you can put anything in this hoop and your machine will automatically split it um, to sew when you send it to the machine um, so long as you've got used the correct hoop so the hoop you need to use is the Artista 400 by 150 mega auto split machines hoop okay and the only thing it won't do is if you have an object that crosses more than one stitching area that is crosses more, is larger than any of these individual outlined areas for instance if I just digitize your shape into that that shape won't split because it's one object it's one solid object and it's larger than any of the individual stitching areas so um, you've just got to watch out for that and I will in a later video show you how to overcome that problem but today I'm using lettering so I'll just undo that and all the letters are an individual object so they will fit within the different stitch out areas now in the adding lettering video I did originally I showed you how to add lettering which was to le left click on here, left click on your screen and type what you want and hit your enter button and it's quite small but um, what that's done is default to the um, default settings which is the London font and I think it's about a centimetre high and you can then right click on the lettering and your object properties box will open where you can change all the settings. Today I'm going to go a different way around it so I'll just undo that. I'm going to go straight to the object properties box so if we right click on our lettering icon we can now type directly into this box here whatever we want to say so I'm just going to type in the lettering that should be on the arc And I've done that all in capitals, good. Okay, now um, you can select your font here. Pat wanted the Chicago font for this one. So we'll just find that here. And you can do your size here. Now remember, and if you watch my adding lettering video, it'll tell you about um, what sizes you can use for the different fonts and how to find that out. But I'm going to use 25 millimeters here and I'm going to leave the width at 100% so that will keep everything in proportion and I don't need to put in an italic value because the letters are straight up and down I'm going to leave the letter spacing at the default 
what I am going to choose is the center justification so that my lettering will be centered on the top of the arc and I'm going to choose this arc circle here which will put my lettering on the top of the arc. Now in my adding lettering video I selected a baseline radius here. I'm not going to bother with that today because I'm going to actually select it on the screen and adjust it on the screen and this is in many cases a lot is a lot easier to do. So what I'm going to do is apply and I could go OK actually at this stage and you'll notice nothing's happened. What I need to do now is left click on the screen and it's actually asking me down here to enter a center point. So what it's actually asking me to do now, because I didn't set a baseline radius, is to create my circle or arc that the lettering is going to go on to. So it's just the same as if you were digitizing a circle. You need to left click to create a center point and then you need to make a circumference. Now I'm thinking an arc about that size will do. So I'm going to left click there and then I'm going to press my enter button so that it is actually a circle. Okay, now that's not bad. If I want to adjust this, first of all, I'll, because I haven't got auto center on, it's not centered. So first of all, I'm going to move it across a little bit and I'll use my arrow keys to do that. Okay, if I want to adjust this, I can use my reshape tool. So if I left click on the reshape tool while the letters are selected, they will turn green, which is the color of the thread in this case, and you'll see all sorts of little marks everywhere, which you can use to adjust your lettering. Now the first two easy ones are this one here and this one here. Both of these can be used to change the radius of the circle. So if you haven't got your arc the right size, you can grab hold of these and make it smaller or larger, depending on what you want to do. Okay, I'll uh, just undo that one. So you can either use that dot there or you can use the center circle, which will leave the top of your circle in the same position and so sometimes that can be useful when you want to leave the center in the same position and just make it tighter around the arc whereas if I undo the other one moves the whole circle 